Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 12. So in this tutorial we're going to bring in some assets to make this a little bit more interesting rather than what it is. We're going to look at a door and we're going to look at animating to open a door as well. So first and foremost what I'd like to do is go into the objects folder and bring in a couple of assets. So I'm going to bring in door and this small tower which you can get on the website for free. Head over there, downloads and assets, and you can download it right there. So all this basically is, is just a nice little kind of town thing going on. And I'm just going to use one of these assets for now. So I'm going to use this house three. So I'm going to place it just over here. So drag and drop. And obviously it is absolutely minuscule. So we need to rework this a little bit. So we're going to have the scale as 200 by 200 by 200. And we can already see just how much this is working. It's a nice size. So let's deal with some colliders. We've dealt with a few colliders before, but now let's get into something maybe not too complex, but a little more complex than what it is. So as it stands, this particular building has no colliders whatsoever. However, it's made up of different parts. And we can see here, these are all the parts. Now, what we need to do, ideally, is attach a collider so as we can still get in. If we were to attach a collider to every single object, whether it be a box collider or a mesh collider, we would not be able to enter this building just because of the way the colliders work. So what we would need to do is select every part of the building apart from doorway. So we would exclude this section right here. Then we go to add component and we can tick box collider right there and what that will do as you can see is surround the building in a box collider however we'd still be able to enter this building but on the flip side of that we'd be able to enter the building through the wall so we now need to edit this and add a couple of how can we put it cubes just we, cubes are so handy in unity it's unbelievable so we need to have basically cubes as colliders here and here and we can do that by going on doorway right click 3d object and cube and it's just a case of bringing the cube into place if we can find it uh, probably need to in fact what i'll do is i'm going to drag the cube out increase its uh, decrease its scale i should say to one by one by one and then re-add it to doorway so it aligns nicely then bring it into position may take a little bit of working, but generally you shouldn't have too much of a problem. So it aligns there nicely. Bring it here. Uh, we'll need to turn off the mesh renderer as well in a second, but it's just a case of moving your camera around, stretching on the X to probably about 0 0.06, no, about 0 0.01 maybe. Yep, that looks fine. And stretching on the Y to um probably about 0, 0.0 no not y sorry <laughs> my bad i've realized it's flipped the other way isn't it so it's this way eight is much too big so we just need to change that to probably six maybe five yep that'll loot and we're going to intercept that with the floor just a little and then turn off mesh renderer control press d bring it over to the other side of the door. And I guess you could always bring it outwards slightly if you wanted to. Again, that's entirely up to you. Uh, I'm not going to rename them because they're always going to be stuck inside doorway. However, let's now just make sure these colliders work. Now, work with colliders can be a little bit difficult at times just simply because they can be so fiddly and not work entirely how you would like them to. But in this instance, we can get inside the building no problem and we can't get out. So it's all good. That's exactly what we want. And we don't glitch through the uh, sides of the door either. So that's colliders for you. Now let's add a door to our door so we can enter the building, but not enter glitching through a door. So if you remember small, a short time ago, I imported this door right here. So I'm going to drag and drop my door onto the scene. And we'll need to increase it. And I've already gone ahead and I know the size and scale that we need to increase this by. And it should be 55 by 51 by 60. We just need to rotate by 90 degrees. 
And quite frankly, I think I'm going to get rid of the door frame because we don't actually need it. And then I'm going to drag and drop the texture for the door onto it like so. So let's bring this door into position. In fact, it's probably not the best size in the world, but I'm not going to waste time trying to get it just right, but it'll do for now. So we're going to make this door swing open when we come near it. Uh, you could also use the same technique as we did with the gem to open the door, i.e. we walk up to it and we have to press the E button. That's entirely up to you. you like I say, it's, it's easy to implement. You just use the same principle as what we're going to do in this trigger. So let's get this with a swinging animation. What we need to do is initially set up a swinging point, i.e. a hinge. And we can do that by adding in a cube. Yet again, like I said, the cubes are incredibly useful. So right click and 3D object cube and this cube itself needs to be dragged out. So probably decrease the size once again, move it into position about there. I'm, I'm going to increase the size on the Y to three and then increase the scale on the X and the Z to 0.1 by 0.1. Just so it seems more like a hinge so we can get a visualization of how this is all going to work. So I'm going to bring this to about there so that it's in place nicely where you would expect a hinge on a door to open and then drag the cube onto door, right click, rename, call this door hinge and now drag P cube 2 which is the door itself onto door hinge. Now what this means is that if we rotate door hinge the door opens and closes. Uh, last thing we're going to do is turn off mesh renderer on the door hinge because it's just a cube. We don't want that to ever appear unless you have an actual hinge rendered. So set this back to zero and on pcube 2 add component box collider again just to stop us glitching through the door into the building. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to create that animation. Now we've dealt with animation component before so let's now deal with the animator component. And I'll explain a little bit more as we go along, but it works roughly the same way. So select door hinge, click on animation, click on create as we've done before. And we'll call this open door village. Now I'm just going to have this called village one. So this is open the door in village one. It's just as simple as that. But we need to remember that name as we've done previously and click save. Now, we've dealt with animation. I'm not going to go through everything all over again, but obviously we do need to set the keyframe on the Y on the rotation. So there's the keyframe, and I'm going to open it over the course of one second. So 60 frames. So by the 60th frame, I want my door to be there. Perfect. Stop recording. Project. And now, again, we just need to make sure that um, the actual animation in this case open door village one untick loop time because we don't need it and remember i said it works in the same way as animation well if we double click this here door hinge this is called a controller this controller contains the animation in a, a different visual way as what animation component does so we can still use the same sort of code it's just that we see it here rather than in the inspector panel so let's get writing that script. Let's head to our scripts folder and let's right click, create, and I'm going to create a folder now specifically just for this village script. So every script that we use in this village will be contained within this particular folder. So village one, and I guess you can call this whatever village you want. I don't have a name for it, but you can call it a village if you want to, whatever you want to call it. Uh, right click, create C sharp script. And we'll call this door open uh, house one. So like I said earlier, what I intend this to be is if we walk up to the door, it has a trigger that opens the door automatically for us. If you want to do something different, this is where you would basically write the script similar to what we did with the collect gem. Now I'm going to click up here on collect gem. And remember, it's going to be the same sort of code as all this here. Remember getting this play, casting uh, setting, the action button. Instead of collect sound.play, you would have the door open 
and uh, play the animation right here if you want to do it that way. So because I'm doing this trigger, I'm going to get rid of void start and void update. And I'm going to have public game object and the door semicolon. So void on trigger enter. And it doesn't need to be private, as I always say. That's fine as it is. And what we need to do is basically play that animation. So instead of relating to the animation component, we relate to the animator component in the same way. So we can go this door dot get component in spiky brackets animator. Not this door, it's the door, isn't it? Uh, animator open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the name of our animation now if you forget the name you can always go to that animation click on it press f2 and copy that actual name that way you avoid any spelling errors uh, quote close bracket semicolon and at the same time we need to disable the box collider or rather the uh, yeah the bo box collider that's because we're doing trigger aren't we sorry so this dot get component and it's breaky brackets box collider up close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and save so we're going to edit a little bit more of this script in just a moment we're going to make sure it all works first so what we need to do is add in a trigger just down here near the door that when we walk into it it opens the door for us so game object 3d object and cube and let's place this cube uh, about here and stretch it across the door on the X about there and turn off mesh render it tick is trigger on the box collider and then attach that script onto cube 2 let's right click and rename cube 2 and have door trigger and then we just need to have the door on there, which is right there. In fact, that should be door hinge, my apologies, not the door itself. So the door is the door, but the door hinge is the important part. So the door is the container for the door. The door hinge is where the animation is. So let's press play and check this out. So the door should stay closed. And as soon as we get close to it, it should okay so it's <laughs> it's already opened up so uh let's get around this what we could do is untick animator this is just one of the many ways that we could deal with it and on trigger enter all we do is uh, the door dot get component open spiky brackets and it's gonna be animator Oh, close bracket dot enabled equals uh, true sorry not not false it already is so logically what's going to happen now is this line of code technically becomes redundant however i'm going to leave it in on the simple premise that we will be modifying the animator uh, for the door again at some point anyway so it comes it, it basically future proofing what we're doing in a way so let's head back to unity and double check that the door is still closed fingers crossed i should really move the uh, character closer so we get close and the door should open for us there we go so now what we'll do is let's attach some audio to that because why not so in the effects folder, in our audio, let's drag and drop the creaky door sound. And again, you can get this on the website, downloads and assets, you can get it there. And we need to attach this to our FPS controller and sounds, effects. And I'm going to duplicate axe swing, change it to door creak, and then drag and drop over there. So now let's add in that variable there. So public audio source creek sound semicolon and then finally creek sound dot play oh close bracket and save 
So now let's check out this full sequence working nicely as long as we <laughs> attach the uh, yeah creak sound. It would help Jimmy, of course it would. So now this should all work. Let's get through these awful bushes. <laughs> And are we ready? There we go. Brilliant. So you can see what we've done here is we've created a couple of different things, but we've combined them nicely to create one single effect. And that is what game development is about on the whole. You create different things here, there and everywhere, and they all come together to create something awesome. So next tutorial, we're going to build up this village. We're going to sort out the fence around it. You know, we'll bring in some rocks. Uh, a path will deal a lot more with environment because these trees I'm not entirely convinced by them so we're going to bring in some cool and awesome looking trees and we'll also start looking at the hood and i don't mean hood is in the hood of your car i mean the ui that's on the screen when we play the game so guys until our next tutorial thank you very much for watching